I swear to you, right now, at the start, this is not clickbait. I turned a 25,000 gold investment into millions through just trading cargo crates in Sea of Thieves. I was in the Devil's Roar to do some cargo runs because there are a few accommodations for delivering ashen cargo on time and in perfect condition I don't have yet. Merchant of Forsaken Silk, Forsaken Flora, and Forsaken Rum. There's primarily two methods to obtain these cargo crates, either through merchant voyage quests from the merchant representative, or my personal favorite, purchasing the corresponding captain's voyage from the shipwright. If you purchase from the merchant representative, you'll be limited to the number of quests available, but with captaincy, you can stack up to 50 voyages at a time. I hadn't done a Devil's Roar cargo run since before captaincy came out, so I was curious if having captain's voyages would make a difference in timeliness, and let me tell you, it did. But there is a trick to this. You see, there are no specific Ashen Merchant Captain's Voyages available, but you can purchase Ashen Athena Captain's Voyages instead. Each of those voyages will have two destinations to pick up cargo from, varying between Fetter's Rest, Ruby's Fall, and Moro's Peak Outpost. All I needed to do was check to see if there were cargo crates available to pick up at Moro's Peak, and once I did, cancel the Athena Voyage and put another one down. This would offer up another opportunity to grab cargo and make it possible to stack. Now, there's no guarantee that Moro's Peak was going to come up as a pickup quest every time you dropped a voyage down. In fact, I feel like it came up less than half the time. If you want to stack even more, you're just going to have to purchase additional voyages. It sounds expensive at first, but considering that one perfect turn-in is worth 3,500 gold with a grade 5 merchant emissary flag and a stack of 50 of these voyages, was just 25,000 gold, there was definitely profit to be made here. Now, for those of you that are wondering what a perfect turn-in is, a real quick overview. A cargo crate needs to be delivered on time and in undamaged condition to be considered a perfect turn-in. Plants need a constant source of water, silks need to be kept dry, and rum, just try not to get into any fights with them on board. Fatal turn them in on time and all gold payments drop in half. If they're damaged, gold will be reduced even further. To solve for this, I placed water on the bottom of my ship, put silk at the mid-deck level, and tried to limit potential engagements with the rum. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows when it comes to this process, let me tell you. First, you're still a target for any other player ship, especially a grade five reaper, who can see your emissary ship on the map and can make a beeline straight for you. In addition, Athena's cargo run voyages have you traveling across the whole map. There were instances where I would pick up at Moro's Peak and the destination would be New Golden Sands or Mermaid's Hideaway. You've got to be able to plan out your route, starting from when your earliest cargo crate is set to expire, and hope you're not delayed by any other mitigating factors. I wasn't deterred though, and proceeded to make my deliveries, a true merchant trader of the seas. For extra gold, you might even consider picking up the commodities available at every outpost while doing this. But again, this is another risk against the timeliness of your cargo deliveries. Another factor is how many of your cargo set to be delivered to a single location. For example, if you have 20 crates, but 10 of them are for one specific destination, you may want to deliver to that destination first, even though other crates may expire sooner. It's truly a numbers game for a savvy investor but we're not quite done with the story yet. You see, there came a point where I ran out of time to deliver my cargo and receive credit for the commendations. So instead of wasting my time traveling island to island still, I knew that I could sell everything remaining at Reaper's Hideout to the Servant of the Flame. What I didn't know is whether or not he would accept the items at full value. So I stacked the remainder of my loot next to him and raised a Reaper Emissary for the assumed little credit that I get at level 1, just like any other emissary turn in, and started to hand the treasure in. I didn't get full value for my items, a little weird by the way that the servant also cares about timeliness, but to my surprise, the reaper emissary went up. That was fantastic news to me, because as soon as I turned in the rest of my loot, I came to the realization I don't have to island hop to sell these crates. Sure, I'd lose out on the commendation since they aren't going to the proper destination, but now there was a different kind of greed that was starting to form in my mind. I smelled a golden opportunity. 
I had made 344,983 gold in that run, and I knew there was absolutely the potential for more. But in order to maximize the investment of 25k, I needed allies. Friends, Lee Cross and Four Fox joined me for this next adventure as we sailed my brig to Fetcher's Rest. I had noticed that Fetcher's seemed to come up more frequently than Ruby's Fall, so I decided to leave someone there while the other two would head to Moro's. This way, two pirates could continue to vote on voyages, but items could theoretically be picked up at two islands at the same time. The danger to this is that Fetcher's, unlike Moro's, will erupt. Something that Lee Cross had to deal with on several occasions. Appreciate you, buddy. Now we were able to almost double our productivity. Unless Ruby's Fall came up twice on the quest list, one of our groups was going to be picking up cargo. Keep in mind, all the dangers mentioned previously still mattered. We could absolutely be attacked while trying to make this work, or a volcano eruption could destroy half our goods. But Lee Cross was fantastic at protecting our future profits, and we were never engaged. So after another 50 quests were spent, we collected our goods and made our way over to Reaper's. We found it took about 30-ish cargo crates to go from level 1 to level 5 Reaper Emissary. And man, did turning in all this feel so wrong and yet so right at the same time. Again, just a 25k gold investment and we walked away with 746,398 gold. But I wasn't done yet. There was still one more card left to play. Gold Rush is a period of time and game where anything turned in has its base reward increased by half. So a 1400 cargo item would now sell for 2100 gold. Add the Reaper 5 emissary multiplier on top of that, and now you're talking 5250 gold per cargo item turned in. I needed to know what that would look like. So we did it again. We lowered our Reaper Emissary so not to put a target on our backs and returned back to Moro's. And we made it a science. We had our timing down. We were looking for the big money. While Four Fox and I gathered at Moro's, Lee Cross hunkered down at Fetcher's. Once again, we had to keep our eyes on the horizon just in case anyone had any ideas. But nothing. We were able to collect in peace. Returning back to Reaper's, we timed our turn in to the minute. Including a little bit of extra treasure that we dug up, we made 1.75 million gold. 25k for 1.75 million gold. All told that day, we made just under 2.5 million gold in cargo running. I never would have imagined it until I did it. And we finished at just the perfect time as a galleon had come barreling toward us just as we were wrapping up. Now while I show off a little bit of our combat, let's talk about how you can replicate this feat. For max profits, you need a crew of at least three. One of you needs to be a pirate legend and have at least 25k gold on you. And you have to be lucky. There's no way around it. We got extremely lucky having no one contest us during the hour or so that we grabbed all these cargo goods or during the turn in of Reapers when you're practically a sitting duck. If you are contested though, defend your loot and reap the rewards. Maybe you'll make your next million or more on cargo too. Thank you to Lee Cross and Four Fox for your help in completing this capitalist experiment on the seas. And thank you all so much for watching this video. I love making Sea of Thieves content for you to watch and I appreciate the love you give in return. If you have a suggestion for the next video, be sure to comment below. And until next time, this is John Bardcore signing off, saying so long and take care.